Hi and welcome. So my time on the Macclesfield Canal has come to an end. I've been here for you know quite some time and it's been fantastic, but it's now time to head south. So I'm going to be leaving the Macclesfield Canal and make my way down to the bottom to join the Trenton Mersey. Once I'm on the Trenton Mersey, then I've got to go through the, uh, the Hare Castle Tunnel once again. Um, but then I'm going to continue on to Fradley Junction, turn on to the Coventry Canal, go along to Hawkesbury Junction, and eventually back down onto the North Oxford. I've got a few things that I need to sort out down there, one of which is going to be getting the boat blacked and checked as well. So that's going to be done a little later on. So in this particular vlog, I'm going to be leaving the Macclesfield, making my way, as I say, down to uh, the Trenton Mersey through the Hare Castle Tunnel. And then I'm going to continue on to Stone and the visitor moorings there, which is where this particular vlog will end. So it's a journey of about 22 miles. I think there's 15 locks. So uh, yeah, it should be quite interesting, but it's just really a gentle, relaxed, laid back cruise. So hope you enjoy. Thank you. So we're underway again, Kobe and I. Just leaving by Bridge 68, not going far. There's the first mate. Keeping a watchful eye. So uh, it's pretty overcast today. They do say it's gonna be dry, so fingers crossed, but apparently over the next few days, we should get, uh, in this part of the country anyway, lots and lots of rain. Part of a, a storm, a hurricane that uh, was across on the Atlantic. So I don't really think we've had much summer at all this year. Been a few hot days, obviously, but overall, um, whether it's just because I'm way north or not, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's not been particularly nice. But it's been good nonetheless. I've enjoyed the Macclesfield. Um, I am making my way slowly south now again. Got my new first mate, and that's really cheered me up. Um, yeah, it's made a big difference. Gets me up early, that's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, he does like his early morning walk. So first walk of the day is generally around seven o'clock. Then breakfast, then he gets a run in the park if there's one close by. And uh, yeah, and then goes through the day. In fact, uh, we've been averaging about. 10 miles walking a day uh, which is great great for me uh, I enjoy walking and uh, obviously it's good for uh, Kobe as well um, you know when you consider he's been more or less cooped up and locked up in a house for the first uh, 10 months of his life or eight months at least yeah so he's been cooped up in a house in the middle of a town on a busy main road so now he's got the freedom to come out and enjoy the nature and the countryside with me which is which is good for both of us really enjoying it so we're just coming up to uh, an aqueduct um, that we've got across and this aqueduct actually crosses what used to be an old railway line. The railway was part of the North Staffordshire line and known locally as the Knotty. As you can see we've got a series of bridges here. I can see one, two, three, four effect effectively in a line. Now we've got these two bridges almost together. The higher one that you can see is the road bridge and the lower one that looks like a slab of concrete <laughs> is actually the railway line. So this is bridge 78 I'm coming up to and it's actually a snake bridge which is where the horses pulling the old boats of the uh, bygone era could cross over the canal from one towpath to another without actually unhitching from the, uh, the boat. As you can see, as we come under the bridge, you've got the curved walkway. And then if I come to the other side, you can see that you've got the walkway coming back down because now the towpath is actually on the opposite side of the canal. There it is. A snake bridge. I'm just about to cross the second aqueduct of the day. Again, a very short one. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. Little Kobe here. We came across that uh, aqueduct. It's very narrow and just as I was going across it he jumped off onto the path. <laughs> and of course he's tied to the boat so panic station trying to get the boat stopped so he could get back on before I got to the wider section of the canal. 
unfortunately there was a couple of guys there and they managed to grab him and jump him across so all's well that ends well okay so as we came across a bridge or under bridge 76 which i said was a snake bridge where the towpath crosses from one side of the canal to the other i'm just coming up now to bridge 77 which is another snake bridge which puts the towpath back to the side it was originally so two snake bridges within probably half a mile and again you can see the walkway going off to the left and that's it. circles round over the bridge and then comes back down the uh, the other side the giraffes on the Macclesfield Canal So this is Ramsdell Hall, still in private ownership, built in 1768 um, and the railings were built so they had a good look over the countryside and you can see here they've been restored between 2008 and 2009. So this is me actually inside the uh, Hall Green stop lock. It's actually the point where the Trent and Mersey officially sort of joins the uh, Macclesfield Canal. There's only a drop of about a foot in the water level so it's not a bad lock to go through. That's it's the first lock you come to when you come off the Trent and Mersey onto the Macclesfield. See the approach to the stop lock is very narrow which is about the same width as the lock so. So I'm just leaving the uh, my mooring spot by bridge 95 on the Macclesfield and today's going to be my last day on the Macclesfield canal. So this morning um, I've got to just come literally a quarter of a mile or so to the end of the, effectively what is the Mac, so the junction with the Trent and Mersey, and then uh, along the Trent and Mersey, and then through the Harecastle Tunnel again this morning. So that's the plan. And then once I'm through the tunnel, um, there's a mooring spot, 14 day, not too far past Longport. So I'm gonna try and find a spot there. So say this last little section of uh, the Macclesfield, but it's not actually the Macclesfield because um, effectively the Trent and Mersey carries on until you get to the you stop lock which is lock 13 and I suppose that's really the official designation between the two uh, two canals but yeah this last a little bit I think everyone still classes it as the Macclesfield to be honest. So this is the uh, the aqueduct that I'm passing which crosses the Liverpool Road, Liverpool Road East. It's not a very uh, long aqueduct just li literally the width of the road. But as I say, I'm just coming up now to uh, this last bridge. And then once I'm through this bridge, I've got to take a sharp left turn and then a sharp right turn back onto the Trent and Mersey. And that's where also the color of the water is going to change. It's going to go to that sort of rusty color water because of the iron. Slowly start to see the change in the color of the water as I get nearer to the actual Trent and Mersey. And the, uh, very much orangey sort of brown when I get to, onto the canal proper. And there's Kobe, just having a good sniff. I think he wants to get off and have a good run. But... So I'm back in the uh, Harecastle tunnel, just entered it. There's two boats in front of me. Timed it perfectly actually, because uh, just as I came onto uh, the Trent and Mersey, two boats had come through. The last one was just coming out. I only waited about 10 15 minutes so, so yeah it's been well timed today so i'm about a third of the way through at the moment there's a higher boat in front of me and they're crawling along at tick over speed and they bang the side a few times so i'm just holding back a little bit just in case i know we're not all experts and you've got to learn but slower you go the more difficult sometimes it is to steer i don't know whether this is picking it up on the camera but you can see the light in the distance that's the entrance that i came in see the light coming through onto the canal so there is light at the end of the tunnel i can just make out in the far distance a bright spot that's the exit to the tunnel 
One thing I've noticed this time though is the stench of the diesel fumes. They've got two massive big fans that they turn on when boats are in the tunnel but I can see sort of smokiness in the air and I can really smell the diesel fumes. So now we are just coming to the, uh, the exit. Yeah. Easy trip today. So this is the entrance to another Hare Castle tunnel. There's three tunnels in fact. The original one, a second one built for narrow boats and the working boats and then there was a third one that was a railway tunnel. At the moment there's only one of the three working. This one's closed off as you can see as is the railway one um, and we use the the main one to go through with the narrow boats. So uh, successfully come through the Hare Castle tunnel again. Used the service point there, topped up with water, got rid of the rubbish, so that was good. And now uh, I'm heading on the Trenton Mersey. Going to make my way all the way along to um, Fradley Junction, and then from Fradley Junction turn on to the Coventry Canal, and uh, then make my way down, directly back down on the North Oxford. Yeah, it feels to be good to be underway. I've spent quite some time in the Macclesfield, about six weeks I think week here, two weeks there, so it's been quite good, but it's nice to be underway again. Oh, just moored up next to me uh, recently is Ben and Emily on uh, their narrow boat, which they're towing their little smaller boat, there you can see, which Ben uses as like a music studio. I've been following them on YouTube for quite some time. So I spent last night moored up here at Westport Lake. It's really quite nice. Quite a few boats, as you can see, there's still some here. The lake is across this side, surrounded with woodland really, um, conservation area as well. So yeah, it's pretty good being able to walk Kobe all the way around. There's the boy, ready to go. It's one of the old bottle kilns at uh, Middle Port Potteries. Misty mornings on the canal. I just started off a lovely morning, almost clear sky, some sunshine. I had a reasonable night uh, moor up last night between bridges 108 and 108A. There was some mooring rings, I think it's a visitor moorings, but I was the only boat there. Um, but it was lovely and quiet, and uh, yeah, peaceful stop. And everyone said, oh, don't stop anywhere near Stoke-on-Trent. Um, but that wasn't right in the centre of Stoke, but it was uh, close enough. But it was lovely and quiet. So my uh, idea today is to uh, slowly cruise along uh, until I get to Stone. Uh, it's about eight mile, I think, eight and a half miles, so yeah probably take most of the days, a few locks as well. Um, but there's some visitor moorings at Stone and a service point. So yeah, that's where I'm going to be heading today. Classic Volkswagen then. And the house with its own mooring slot.
Um, I'm on the Trent Mersey. That's a grey, miserable, damp morning. Quite mild, it's got to be said, but it is overcast and grey and yeah. <laughs> Feels more like autumn than summer, but there we go. So I'm out taking Kobe for his first walk of the day. It's just gone seven. To get used to this, especially when it gets dark in the winter, aren't I? But there you go. See the skies and even grey all over. So despite the overcast days, um, we've had some great sunsets as well. So I've reached Stone and this is where I'm going to end this video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one when I continue my journey further south. Thanks again. <laughs>